I would like to invite Mashu Ahmed to talk about artificial intelligence and project management practice. He has over 18 years' experience in the field of project management and management consulting. He also holds a master's from the University of Waterloo and is PMP in RMP certified. Please let's clap our hands to welcome Mark. Thank you, Mr. Okay. So first of all, I would like to thank you for attending the session. Um, we'll go over this presentation and uh, I would prefer to take the question and answers towards the end of the presentation. <coughs> And if required any public discussion, I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions you may have over the lunch or uh, after this presentation. So, Chow, can you help me with this? seen that Google reflects demo? Okay. Very clear. So let me just uh, quickly uh, have the demo. It's less than two minutes, so. Yeah. 
What's the post that you're writing? Oh, sorry, I can just. Uh, So you can see that how the communication was happening and how on the fly the, the computer on the other end was continuing the negotiating and discussing uh, with the person until he or she finds the right answer to what he or she was requesting, right? So this is a small example of how this is happening. Now artificial intelligence is happening in every single field, right? So we will delve into it, what exactly it is. So the question is, what is artificial intelligence? John McCarthy in 1955, find the term artificial intelligence. Uh, it is the ability for the computers uh, to behave like human, right? Or the ability for computers to perform tasks that normally requires human intelligence or to imitate human intelligence behavior, such as visual perception, uh, voice recognition, uh, decision making, data analysis, and pattern analysis. <coughs> <laughs> All right, so over 200 years ago, first industrial, industrial revolution has changed the world we live in. Currently, we are witnessing the fourth industrial revolution, which includes emerging technologies such as robots, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, uh, nanotechnology, quantum computing, uh, autonomous cars, and others. Every industrial revolution happened faster than the earlier one. Before we jump into more details, let's turn back into history for some quick lessons. In the 18th century, uh, Wolfgang van Kamplen showcased a mechanical Turk in Vienna. It was a chess playing device that defeated a number of statesmen of that time, including Napoleon Bonaparte and Benjamin Franklin. Mechanical Turk was a life size uh, model, dressed in Ottoman robe and turban, as you can see in the picture. He's holding a pipe on his left hand. And on the other picture, you can see the back of the torso, how the shows how the mechanical arm works. And under the camera, if you see a clock-like structure, which is, was very high-tech in 18th century, right? Um, so Mechanical Turk won most of the games in Europe and America for almost eight decades, about 80 years, 70 to 80 years, it, it won all, most of the games in Europe and North America. However, there was no technology involved. It was an illusion and a fake device operated by the master chess player. The key here is that this machine fascinated audience all over Europe and America for eight decades. Right? You might be wondering why we are talking about the fake device built in the 18th century. Well, history repeats itself and over and over again. With the rise in artificial intelligence solution, we have seen rise in solo AI solutions as well. So according to Guardians, uh, one of the respected newspaper in the UK, uh, it is easier <coughs> to get humans to behave like robots than is is to get machine to behave like human. Right? <laughs> so it is very common that most of the companies or any company you go and talk to today, they will say, yes, we are developing something using artificial intelligence or machine learning, right? But you need to go in detail and ask some smart questions to see whether it's really artificial intelligence or there's somebody sitting behind, uh, behind the scene. So how do we know whether it's a real AI solution or it's a fake solution? Does it do it for you? Or you need to you need somebody to operate it on day to day basis, right? By definition, artificial intelligence solution does not require human interaction because it is intelligent system that mimics the human behavior. So there should be no need of somebody to operate that machine on day to day basis. Is it a black box versus a transparent solution? And it is a black box or a proprietary solution that vendor cannot explain to you how it works, how the machine learning or the, how the technology behind the scene works. The chances are it could be a scam because they don't want to tell you how it works, right? Is it plug and play versus long learning curve? So all AI solutions have a learning curve, meaning they read from the data, they read from the existing data, they learn the pattern, they learn the behavior, and then they come and start providing the solution. So that's required the training of the learning curve. However, this learning curve is usually very short. It could happen over the period of days not in the months. So if somebody is selling you something that's going to take one month to train on your system or three months to train on your system and that will, it will start giving you the result, the chances are it may not be what you're looking for. However, 
if you are developing an in-house solution, let's say you have your developers or the programmer, programmers available to you, and they are developing in-house system, then yes, it will take long learning curve because they have to develop and fine tune that system. Does it offer consistent and improved results over the period of time? You install the AI system, you have it up and running. Now, does it give you consistent result? Do you see the improvement? Right? Do you see improvement in, in this stuff, or do you see continuous improvement? You should be able to see the continuous improvement as part of the artificial intelligence. Yes. Okay. <coughs> With the technology advancement and convergence of technology uh, happening at a very high speed, uh, we'll look at the phenomenon called asset. And what exactly it is, basically, it's a combination of four different technologies that I would like to talk, up, talk about, because this will help, and this will, this is how the technology is emerging and changing because of these four technologies become available to us. The first one is algorithm. So algorithm is, sim in simple language, it's a step to perform any task, right? Um, some people will say it is, and also for the artificial intelligence algorithm as well. The next one is cloud computing. Cloud computing is a system that is not hosted by or maintained by your organization. Rather, it is provided by the service provider to you. And uh, the small comp cloud computing allows a small organization to have a scalable solution available to them without any maintenance overhead. The next one is IoT, which refers to Internet of Things. These are the physical devices connected. Uh, they collect different types of data and share the information with different systems. So that could include a sensor, um, that could include autonomous car, that could include uh, your light bulbs, your home appliances, a number of other things. Last is data. So data is key, key for any information system. For artificial intelligence tool, uh, data, we need the data to develop and train the system. <coughs> it is very important to have the good quality of data. Otherwise, it will be garbage and garbage out. So if you don't have a good set of data, you can train some person new system, new personal system incorrectly and you will train the bad habits of the organization which you don't want. We will see a number of use cases in our presentation that are only possible because of this technology components. Artificial intelligence requires certain level of maturity uh, within the organization and within the project management function itself. Uh, artificial intelligence can bring deep insight into projects. It needs to be kept with a good data set uh, from which it can learn and learn what works and what does not work for your organization. So what works for your organization may not work for your organization, right? So one system is not fit for all. So you need to see if it works for you, does not work for the other organization as well. So that's why it's important to have the clean set of data. Organizational readiness would be the biggest challenge the management will face in adoption of technology and adoption of artificial intelligence tool. AI will impact each and, each and every area of the project management, project knowledge, knowledge areas as we call them uh, from the PEMBO. Uh, project management managers must focus on to bring value. Soft skills is one of the key areas where human project manager will be successful and will be able to leverage AI tools for rudimentary tasks. This will include our ability to motivate teams, building trust and relationship, ideation, empathy, and intuition. Artificial intelligence allow project managers and PMO to reduce the amount of uh, uh, to reduce the amount of admin work and the amount of overhead that we have to do all the time, right? So that we can focus on more creative tasks and higher level tasks. So, based on the survey uh, conducted by Harvard Business Review earlier this year, 54% of the project manager, manager's time is taken up by the administrative tasks. Most of these rudimentary tasks that all project managers hate can be optimized using artificial intelligence tools available in the market. This will require project <coughs> managers to focus on delivering value and providing incomparable solution to the organization. <coughs> these rudimentary tasks are from all project knowledge areas. Uh, first one, um, we have some solutions available that are called project bots, right? So they, they can help you with frequently asked questions. They can help you find some information in different systems. So you have information available today in emails, your PMO systems, your other application, or your ERP system, right? So these bots will go into these different repositories of data and find the information. The next one is, uh, yeah, we can help you find information and also we can help you find the codes. So for example, there are different invoicing codes, right, that you need to 
code for different voices for different vendors. They can provide you the status updates on the task, different tasks. They can generate the status report for you based on those tasks that are completed by your team. They can also help you generate meeting minutes. That's one of my least favorite tasks as a project manager to document the meeting minutes. Right? I have to do it, but I hate it, and it's not fun. Now, here, there are tools available that can help you document some meeting minutes. Task reminders, so some people like to be reminded about the task, no matter if you tell them how many times they still need to be reminded, right? That's your team. So you have the task reminders as well as the voice reminders available to your mobile devices. The last point here is automated, automatic language translation. With nowadays, we are working with uh, different nations, different organizations, people from different countries. The language translation tools come really handy, right? It can help you translate and it can do those things in the real time so you can have a real conversation in a meaningful way. Scope management. Artificial intelligence tool in the near future will help us to validate the project scope, what is in the scope and what is out of the scope, so that as a project manager we can manage the scope fit. Schedule management. Project management tools will be able to predict and determine when deadlines are not going to be met. And in the next few slides, I will have some examples uh, in the risk management slide, another slide, and I will elaborate more because they all come together in one good example. Further, these tools can automatically revise and update the project baseline uh, based on the realistic information available to you. Cost management, uh, cost estimates is one of the biggest big challenge for the project managers, right? If you are working on a uh, number of contractors, you need to make sure you control the cost. Uh, so any slippage in your project plan will have an impact on your cost. So this is where your tools can be helpful to say that you have to finish those tasks within this period of time because of the slippage it will run the cost over run and you have to pay this much extra from your uh, project, <coughs> project or the management budget. Quality management. AI tools can use the visual data to check the rate of progress uh, by matching against the desired plan and design parameters. It can detect error in construction companies uh, by, using a, by using a visual data scan on a daily basis. Further, it can measure, further it can measure uh, progress based on those scans, and any deviation in the project baseline will automatically raise an issue to be addressed by the project management team. AI tools can use the IoT devices. Remember earlier I was talking about uh, Internet of Things. IoT devices, <coughs> right? So this can include weather sensors, seismic sensors, cameras, drone, your robots, right? And based on different readings, AI tool can reschedule tasks if it impacts the quality of the deliverables. So for example, if there's a rain in the forecast, right, <coughs> and you're working on the construction site, then you're not supposed to do your foundation work next day, right? You have to wait two or three days more, right? So that can automatically be rescheduled, right? Now you have the seismic, uh, readers as well that are available. You have the weather uh, weather sensors and you have number of other sensors <coughs> that can help you in this area. Resource management. Resource management is a big function of the PMO. Uh, not all resources are equal. It is very important to have the right resources with the required skill set on your project. To ensure your project remain on track, it is essential to have the right people on the team. Artificial intelligence tool can delve into the history of the past project. So you have a repository about the past projects and the team, how they work on those teams, available in some system to you. The AI tool can go back into those history and come back and come back with some solution saying who are the team members that you want to bring forward on this team. And you can even add extra hands and take people off the project if there's a desperate uh, required versus the project number of hours available on the project. AI tool also help you with the vacation schedule, resourcing with the vacation, resource leveling with the vacation schedule, with the vacation schedule, number of chairs, completing projects, <coughs> all the operational support. Team dynamics is another key important factor uh, for project managers. Last thing you want to on your project is to have a dysfunctional team. AI tools can look into the historical data and within its context predict. Uh, the, uh, and assign the right team member based on the skill set and the team dynamics. Communication management. As we have seen in the earlier slide, uh, uh, the PM bots or the, uh, 
bots can help you automatically create the status report. They can automatically send the communication on your behalf. They can send the automatic reminders and do the follow up on your task as well. It also eliminates the need of the, the setup meetings and can also help us reduce the time of time we spend in the meetings on a daily basis. On an average, project managers spend three to four hours on a daily basis in meetings, right? So that would be a very good reduction of time where we can add value. As I said earlier, consent communication, <coughs> uh, and uh, it can also look at the changes. What are the changes ha happening on the project? Uh, on the project? If there's a risk, your risk score is going up or down. You have the new issues, how you need to address those issues. You can send those communication to your management and the project leaders as well. One of my favorite things about the project risk management is bad news does not get better with age. It is very important for project leaders to conduct risk analysis throughout the project. However, we get too busy in our daily chaos and firefighting that we do not do the proper regression and the risk analysis on all the risks that we have on the project. This is where AI tool can help. This is where AI tool can help us to tr identify and track the risk, to conduct the regression analysis all the time, and, and move the risk score up or down, depending on what is happening on the project, so that project leaders and the sponsor can take appropriate actions. AI tools can also help relating internal and external dependencies. Further, it can relate to the project risk and conduct the risk assessment and the regression analysis on the fly. Within PMO function, artificial intelligence tool can help you select the mix of the project that can balance the risk and the reward. Because within PMO, you don't want to take all the high-risk projects in one year. You want to take some high-risk project, some medium-risk project, and some low-risk project so that you can show your progress over the period of time. Procurement manager. AI tool can also help in the procurement, especially in the contract management. Uh, you, might have, you might have heard that artificial intelligence tools are available for the legal support as well nowadays, right? So they can read all the legal contracts and documents and say what is beneficial for you in this contract and not, right? And the legal language is always very complicated. It's never a simple English, right? You always need somebody who holds who a uh, double master's level degree to explain to you what is written in the plain English. Further, AI tools can also have a news feed, right? Uh, that can take, uh, that can provide insight into the market changes. So, for example, there's a changes in the in the market prices, there are changes in the tariff, there are changes in some uh, some laws of the natural disaster, right? So, based on this information, AI tool can suggest alternative sourcing partners that can meet your project needs and reduce cost if possible. All right. Stakeholder management, one of the key challenging area for all of project managers is the stakeholder management. Every stakeholder is different uh, and have different expectations. Some are risk averse while others <coughs> like to take risk. Some like to be updated by email or always a formal communication, while others prefer in-person communication before you send any communication out. AI tool can help us project managers in setting and meeting those expectations for those stakeholders. It can develop a personalized report on the fly for your specific uh, for your specific stakeholder at the preferred time of the day. Right. So, for example, some of the managers or some of the executives would like to read the status report for your projects on Friday evening. Others prefer first thing on Monday morning. Right. Others prefer to review those reports on midweek. Right. So, depending on your stakeholder and what the expectation is, you can automatically set up these types of alerts. Right. And it can automatically send that information through your different stakeholders at different time of day. So far we have uh, covered impact of AI tools uh, on all project knowledge management areas. In the next two slides, I will discuss some of the AI tools that are available in the market. Uh, remember, these are not the tools specifically for the project managers, but these are the productivity tools that can be used in a number of different ways. Uh, the first one is wrap up. It's a smart voice note. It, it takes the voice notes and automatically create the meeting minutes. So anybody who would like to take meeting minutes, they can use this tool. However, uh, the challenge is as soon as you start recording the meeting, some of the people in your meeting uh, will, be, will not be comfortable with you recording your voice. 
<laughs> so that would be a challenge. So and remember, I was talking earlier that adoption is the biggest challenge, right? So adoption of will be the biggest challenge. And the AI we will be bringing a number of tools into the meeting rooms, right? And some people will not be comfortable about those tools. Firefly, another tool that syncs up uh, the calendar application and it transcribes your meeting. Instead of using the meeting minutes, it transcribes it for you. Uh, strategies, it coordinates with the team members, identify the risk, <coughs> uh, send the reminders, uh, and do the performance review as well, and integrate with different project management tools like that, so project and others, and Jira. Nightspare is another um, gamified project management tool. It reminds you about the overdue tasks, uh, upcoming events, unfinished conversation, analyze them, and suggest improvements. Can I go back? So next is Clarison and Forecast. Uh, these are the resource management and project management tool. They learn from the history of the project and do the regression model to provide the project estimate and the task duration, right? So remember, if you have a good quality of data on your projects available, these tools will be really useful. If you don't have a good quality of data, uh, these tools will not be as useful as they can be. Uh, Harmon, another AI tool that stops the communication from different sources. We all are bombarded nowadays with email, WhatsApp messages, Bible messages, text messages. And I hate it when somebody sends me a very important message uh, on a WhatsApp because I don't check WhatsApp during my office hours. I get like 200 messages every single day from different friends, right? So I prefer not to check them. But now with all the bombardments, there's no way you can, you need to filter, right? So they are the tool that are available to you to filter that information and give you the information that you really need to review and take action on. Lily, uh, it uh, automates the recurring tasks. So you have the recurring meetings, you need to do different things for that. You need to book the meeting rooms, stuff like that. Identify the risk and measure them and help prioritize your uh, to-do list and reduce the wait time. QDS, it uses the natural language processor <coughs> to sort your emails by subject and priority. So <coughs> in your communication, you're getting 500 emails a day. You don't have time to read all 500 emails. These type of tools can help you in any of these situations. Dialogue flow is a virtual assistant, uh, just like a Google Assistant, that can uh, integrate with different <coughs> platforms and different devices. All right, so human like. Sorry, can we see the slide? Yep, yeah. thank you. Thanks. Okay, human like. So, what are human eyes? Human like is someone who appears to be human and to have some extent. Have, an, have a knowledge or intelligence similar to human, right? But these are not humans. Currently, we are seeing the application of human rights in healthcare settings, as well as in the information that's in the chaos. Um, also, as a human companion in the long-term care facilities, where they can come and help uh, the people living in, in long-term healthcare with some of the light exercise, right? Uh, as well as also some companion, they can have a conversation with you as well. Remember we. So I uh, earlier the demo from the Google, so they can have some conversation with you. So the people living in long-term care, the challenge is that they have nobody to talk to, right? So it's an artificial, it's a humanoid that they can talk to now. So what's gonna take us next? With the advancement of technology, you will witness the autonomous project uh, managers sometime in the future. It will, be, it will work on based on information available on the projects and a team in number of systems. However, this will take some time to develop uh, and have fully autonomous uh, project manager. So what we have seen right now, where we are, is this stage, we, we have seen integration, we have seen the email communication and all of this in different productivity tools. We will move to the chatbot assistant in the next, I would say, two to three years. Most of us will somehow have, start having some type of AI tools available to us. In three to five years or more, we will have the machine-based uh, learning of the project manual practice so that you can, as a project manager, you can develop the project plan and give it to your machine-based uh, project manager, and this machine-based project manager can run the project on, on your behalf. So for example, in where I'm working right now, we have limited number of project managers. So what sometimes we do is we help different departments create the project plan and give them a quick start, 
and then one of the team members can lead the project from there. He's not a project manager, but he can lead the small to medium sized projects. Then, sometime in future, which I predict anywhere from 10 years plus, right, we will have an autonomous project manager, where instead of hiring a project manager, you would be hiring uh, autonomous project manager services on the cloud, right? And he or she will perform the task and you can change the voice of that person as you have seen in the Google demo earlier, right? You can change the voice, you can change the accent and you can do different things. And then there will be a project manager and you will be told that this project manager is sitting somewhere in other part of the world and he's only available on the Skype calls for you. All right? So with that, I would like to thank you all for attending this session, and we can have some question and answers. Any questions? Is the mic for you? <laughs> it wasn't such a big question. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier on, you talked a little bit about the use of AI and improving trust within the teams. Right. Um, I can see how it does the communication, but the trust is a, is a very human kind of thing. I just wondered if you could yes. expand a little bit on, on that. Right. So, so this is this is where the human project managers come in picture. Right. So we still have 15, 20 years from now till we have a fully autonomous project manager. Right. So the trust in relationship is something that project managers, the human people we can provide, right? So we'll continue to see this unless the technology is developed to an extent where we can see that, you know, it can, does a trust relationship as well, right? Usually the trust relationship comes in the face-to-face -face discussion, right? So for example, I have some stakeholders, the management people, they will say, you know what, don't send me an email, come to my office, right? I'll talk to my assistant, schedule some time, come to my office seven o'clock in the morning, right? Let's talk first thing in the morning. And we resolve all the issues in 10, 15 minutes. <coughs> Yeah, other executives will say, you don't need to come to my office, just send me an email and I will sort it out for you. Right. So now it depends on how it will evolve, right? So it, all of these things will evolve in the next 20, 15 to 10 to 15, 20 years, right? And as technology matures, we start adopting the technology, right? 10 years back, nobody had the iPhone or like Samsung phones, right? Now everybody has it, everybody uses it, it's given, right? So another 10 years from now, those things will be there. Autonomous project managers will be there to do, to do the job and it will be accepted. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you. Working? Yeah. Um, just a very basic and very practical question. I can see the value of having some uh, kind of bots for frequently asked questions. I mean, that's something that probably is applicable um, quite widely. But how do you actually start? You know, if you think, mm, yeah, good idea, I'd like to know more about it, I'd like to understand costs, <laughs> you know, lead times, everything else like that. What do you do first? So remember I was talking about uh, the adoption of technology is the biggest challenge, right? It's with any technology, right? Nowadays, it's very common for the health techs to have the bot, right? You go on any, any website for any customer service thing, you probably you get a pop-up message, hi, I'm Lisa, I can answer any question for you, right? So now we start seeing those things for the last one to two years, right? In our company, we have installed a bot as well, right? That answers the help desk question. So it releases the number of emails and the calls we receive on the help desk, right? Because people can simply go and say, how can I set up my printer on this floor, for example, right? Or I forget my password, how do I reset my password, right? Or what are the issues are? So again, it will take some learning curve, right? It will come to the discussion. So like you are coming to this conference, you are attending this event and particular this session because you are interested, right? So you guys will go back, you guys will do more research and within one or two years, you will start seeing some of these applications coming up in the market, targeting specifically for the project manager. Now, another thing is, it's the, for bigger corporations, I call it like a big elephant, right? It's difficult to move, right? <coughs> it's a big elephant, it's difficult to move and see what is happening in the back, right? But for the smaller organization, they are more agile, they are more, more development friendly, they are more open to the new ideas and the new tools, right? So we will see the adoption in these areas first, right? 
and then you will see into the big corporation as well. Does that answer your question? I'm not sure what my first step is to go and actually find out more or understand more. Find out more? Yeah. And if you want to find out more, I have listed a few applications here. Just go and have a look at okay. Just go and have a look at these, right? See if it fits your need. And again, these are some of them are productivity applications, <coughs> right? Not truly the project management. Some of them are, they are saying it's a project man management application. If you are using, G anybody using Jira for the project management tool? Yeah, okay. Then probably you can integrate with some of these applications as well. Okay. Same question at the back. Yeah. You mentioned that the um, data going in is really important. Yes. So is there something <coughs> there for us to, in preparation for something like this, to bring the data to a certain state? so that it is good enough for, um, to be able to, you know, for AI to come in and use that. Right. And we need to do that. Very good question. So data is a key. Now the thing is, it's, I'm not talking about the structured data. We are talking about unstructured data. So structured data is your data available in your database, in your spreadsheets, in your ERP systems, and stuff like that, right? The most of the project data, like if you really want to find out how Mike was doing on the project, for example, right, you will not find that level of detail of how good or bad he was doing the project in any of your uh, HR system or any tools, right? Because nobody wants to do a write up on him. But if you review the email threads, for example, right, if you review the unstructured data, which is in the email, you will see that Mike was responding to 50 emails on the project, right? or Mike was, was very proactive on the project and he was doing better on, on, the, on the project, right? So that information is not available anywhere, so it's all unstructured. And another thing that we need to keep in mind is artificial intelligence is a system that mimics the human intelligence, right? So it should be able to figure it out. Is this the right data or not? If it's not, bypass this. This is the right data, this is the right information that I'm looking for, and then go from there. So there's very less you can do to do the data cleansing. I know that sometimes you have a data migration projects. You need to cleanse the data because it's going from one structure to another structure. Here we are talking about unstructured data. So it's not a, it's an artificial intelligence solution. It should be able to do it. Yeah, give it a time. This morning we had a full board session, a keynote session about the whole people side of project management, right? Yeah. Do you ever see the people management side of being cannibalized by AI <coughs> in the next 10 to 15 years? You know, the whole human relationship aspect yeah. which comes along with the project management side of things. Now that's such a key thing. Yeah. Do you ever see that? Right, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about my, uh, a couple of months back, I was driving my son, he's seven years old, and I was like, uh, yeah, I take you all over the places. So when I get old, are you gonna take me around the town? He said, no. So I was like, why? He said, because I won't be driving the car. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, because they will start driving cars all over the place, right? So now a seven-year-old can think about that he will not be driving the car. And remember, the kids who are born this year, right, they will not be driving the cars in the future. Uber drivers, they will be out of jobs sometime in the next two to three years, right? In most of the big cities in the world, right? So this will happen eventually, right? Now, are we prepared for this? And as we have seen industrial revolutions, right? So remember the fourth, four industrial revolution we have seen. We have seen the steam engine, electrical power, the digital revolution, the computers, and now AI is coming in the picture. We always think that, you know, it will reduce the jobs, there will be no jobs, but now see how much is the population in the world, right? Uh, how many people are employed? And well, there will be jobs, there will be skilled jobs, there will be knowledge-based knowledge jobs, right? And there are some jobs that you may not be able to automate, right? So this is where the human perspective will be stay there. Last question, how much do we have for time? Okay. The artificial intelligence um, areas, but he, he, he claimed about covering 
things that are done by humans at the moment right the way through. And a lot of the data, as you say, is unstructured data. And basically, the fundamental thing about it is that trust is the foundation of everything. So how do you understand that a, an artificial intelligence system is actually worthy enough for you to trust the results it's giving you? Because basically, it's providing results from unstructured data. So how do you validate it? You have to give it a try. So what happens is autonomous cars. Um, so okay. So if uh, so autonomous cars, right? So we start seeing the autonomous autonomous cars or the self-driving cars in the last five years, right? Do you know when was the was the first attempt to have an autonomous car or self-driving car? It was in 1988 from Carnegie Mellon University, right? So it takes like 20 years. Right, or 30 years to come up with something which we can prototype and run on the, on the roads and fields of the body. Right? So, or is it self driving cars, but they're not safe? It is uh, a self driving assist, so you've still got the driver who takes over the unusual situation. Well, it is. What's going on in the space at the moment? The big debate about it, isn't it? The, there's a big debate, yeah. but the technology will mature, right? Whether it's going to be two years or five years, it's just a matter of time, right? The same thing with the artificial intelligence tool in project management, right? There will be some tools that we can start using now. So for example, to take the meeting minutes, to do the task reminder, stuff like that. And over the period of time, all of these things will mature. As these things will mature, they will evolve into something new and something new. And eventually, it will get to an autonomous project management. But it's gonna happen in 20 years, or 30 years, or 40. We don't, I cannot predict the future. But it will happen sometime. Yeah. All right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.